It's continuous crop, we're never done. We're, we're at it 12 months a year. An almond tree is not very forgiving. Uh, you've got, it has to be managed correctly. People are catching it on. Every, oh, everybody's growing almonds. We all are growing permanent crops now. Either pistachios, almonds, or grapes. That's all that's here. 2006 seemed to be the good time to start planting. At that point, by the way, my father and Andy both said, there's too many almonds planted. Well, we know the history of that. There was a billion pounds at that point. Now we're up to three, three billion pounds per year. We got to utilize the land and the water as profitable as we can. You're seeing everybody going either drip alfalfa or drip grapes or drip cotton or drip almonds. Yeah, we'll see right here. You can see the uh, you can see the a nut forming right here already. And right here it, where this bloom is, this is this this will be a nut. Every day it's different. Every day it's different. Now we're out here checking bees. We're, we're fertilizing in our water here right now in drip system. So we monitor that closely. So there's something every day in these orchards. And we've got, I don't know, six or seven ranches. So we're busy every day in some of them, for sure. Usually late March, early April, we start to get an idea of what type of crop we potentially have. You know, that's when we really start determining what our fertilizer program is going to be for the year, what type of crop are we going to have to fertilize for, what size of crop, um, what the nutrient demands of the orchard are going to be, um, and that'll take place through April. And then the tree at that point, based on how healthy it is, how well we've taken care of it, um, is going to decide of how much crop it can support for the season. There will be a, a period of shedding, you know, they call it a, a June drop or a May drop, but it, the tree will um, naturally shed some some of the fruit off um, and decide what it can support um, and so this that month of April and May is really critical on keeping the trees as healthy as possible and letting the tree know hey it, hopefully every nut that's on there can stay on there you know become an almond at the end of the season. The lighter soil will run maybe a little bit less uh, hours per set but we'll run them a little more frequently. In sandier ground if you put too much water it just percolates right past the root zone. Our heavier ground it won't percolate quite as fast so like in this particular orchard we're, we'll, we've, we're gonna run this water about 12 hours and we're gonna shut it off we might come back tomorrow for another 10 or 12. But during our summer months May, June, July, August we'll run, we'll run these systems probably 70 hours a week. We try to run off-peak or we'll run weekends and but uh, and run around our spray cycles and harvest cycles and things. So soil type means, you know, you'd have to manage every one differently. We'll turn this water off probably in two or three hours, then tomorrow we'll turn on again for a little bit, but we're able to monitor it. We can set our irrigation just about by a calendar pretty much. So every week we'll know where water's gonna be on a specific day, checking out weather forecasts and projected weather and one thing or another. This is all on double line drip system where we're able to fertilize, fumigate, everything through our water just about. We have found with double line drip system is a lot less maintenance. Coyotes don't seem to bother them quite as bad. Dogs, we like it better. We're using on all our almond fields, we're using the uh, Netafim SuperNet micro sprinklers. We really like those. Um, they, they throw a, a full pattern, almost probably about a 80% coverage of the orchard floor. And that helps us for a variety of reasons. Number one is frost control, provides us a little bit of frost protection on this early season, late February, early March, when the threat of frost can could potentially harm the crop. We can generally raise the temperature of the orchard anywhere from two to three degrees, uh, which could be critical at certain stages. It also provides us the ability to incorporate our pre-emergent herbicides into the soil. Um, we don't gotta worry about spraying around rainfall events and worry about herbicides getting incorporated, we can flip on the sprinklers and incorporate the pre-emergence with the sprinklers. Also, we can incorporate uh, any dry fertilizers we might put on in the fall and not have to worry about waiting for rain to do that. And then we can also um, incorporate some spring applied soil amendments different gypsums or sulfurs, things like that, that we can put on in the spring, get the benefit of those throughout the summer um, and incorporate them with the spring and not have to worry about rainfall events. 
And then lastly, in our area, high salt, alkali soils, we're able to push salts down through the root zone and uh, leach salts out in the wintertime and help, help keep a healthy root zone. Plugging can be a concern with, with any system, and generally it starts at the filtration side, but, but when we see these higher volume sprinklers, a little bit bigger orifice sizes, we, we generally don't worry about it as much as we would with a, more of a low volume system that's, that's putting out um, smaller amount. We put out about, oh, 0.056 inches per hour, um, and so we'll put about an inch and a third on in a 24 hour period. Um, so we generally run shorter sets than that, uh, the shorter, more frequent sets, but, uh, but we can put out a, a big volume of water in a short period of time if we need to, or we can put out a, a small volume just by uh, running less hours. With the mini sprinkler, uh, mini sprinklers and drip system, we're saving so much water over the conventional flood systems of 20 years ago. When we first started farming almonds, uh, flood irrigation a little bit, if you had a 2,000, 2,200 pound crop, you were, you were very happy. Now we're getting 3,000 plus. This orchard right across the driveway here did 3,600 pounds as a fifth leaf. So, you know, our, t our, our yield has went up substantially and a lot of it is water, water management is, is the key. But it, it is a challenge. The crop is looking really good. Uh, these trees are in good shape, um, coming into harvest. Uh, no disease issues, no uh, insect issues. Everything, we're hoping that when we start harvesting, everything will be great. If you can make your tree stay at a, a, the same level, and it's a healthier tree, if you overwater and then stress, and overwater and stress, it's harder on the tree and it's better if you can keep it, the soil moisture at the same point all year long and that way the tree get, is healthier for that. It's kind of like sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner and stuffing yourself and then you don't want to eat for two or three days where the rest of the time you eat a, a three meals a day or two meals a day and you're fine. So it's kind of that same uh, you don't want to overfeed the tree or overwater the tree because you're just wasting it. And we'll apply some fertilizer depending on weather. We may we will run the micros, but we may change and turn turn on the drip system in order to keep water to the tree. Uh, Why we're spraying? Why we're doing groundwork or spraying so we don't um, destroy our soil conditions or our surface. And then we will continue to irrigate with the micros through the season up until harvest and we'll go to the drip. We do have the advantage by having the dual system that if we need to apply water but we need to do tractor work at the same time, we can turn the drip system on in order to maintain uh, soil moisture. We're probably 10 days from shaking this field. We're just getting geared up to go. I would say around the August 15th we'll be shaking hard. Um, we're fortunate in this area. We're able to have good quality water and kept water on so we're, we're not any stress. I've always said we're making next year's crop right now. This one's done. So we like to keep our water and nutrients levels in pretty good shape. Even though we're pulling down the nitrogen levels, we still like to keep the water and the other nutrient levels up because we know next year's crop's being made right now. The bud set's being set. We used to flood everything. Then we went into micros. And then we've got into this double line drip. And in the last five years, we've built a machine that we can open the ground up, lay this hose after the second leaf and then roll it in at about three inches deep. And then Netafin came out with this new copper line. And it's, I think we've had it now, some up for three years. It's gonna handle the pressure of the gophers and their, the root intrusion, the compaction. It seems like it's really handling it well. We feel the Uniram XRS could last um, 20 to 30 years, the life of the tree. We, the oldest stuff we have in now, the Uniram SRX is uh, fourth or fifth leaf and we haven't had any trouble with it. We don't get any evaporation because the minute the water comes to the top, we know we're wasting water. We try to utilize every bit of water we can with this tape and it seems to be staying where it needs to be and in the root zone and below and not coming to the surface where we're, we're losing it. We're running all our nutrients through it also. We're running our fertilizers, uh, urea, CAN-17, UN-32, uh, copper, zinc, we're running everything through it. We've really seen our benefit at harvest time. 
our trees never go through a stress. It really works because three days after we shut the water off, we shake and within 12 hours, the tree's back getting water again. Once those almonds are off, it's already thinking about next year. Before, when we were flooding orchards, we were running between 22 to 2,600 pounds the acre. When we went into uh, putting um, Netafim drip in or, or micros in, we moved up to anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000 pounds an acre. The harvest is something that it comes to fruition all at one time. You get to see the fruits of your labor, how well you did or didn't do, and it is just a, it's just a rewarding to be able to see all that. I've done this for 46 years and I don't plan on stopping too soon. water. We continuously water, just less or more. You know, less or more. Yeah, you know, we are irrigating 12 months out of the year, it seems. You know, we asking, really yeah. don't take much time off. These trees, they won't lose their leaves until sometimes in January, you know, depending on the frost and that type of thing. We don't have the valley fog that we used to have. So we're keeping these, these trees haven't dropped their leaves, so they're still using water to a certain extent, not as much. Then we get into the early season, the growing season, post bloom, and then you want to start developing a reservoir down there for, for when it does turn hot, so the tree doesn't go into a stress and then have a big nut drop. You know, we see that before too. I was 15 years old when we planted our first almond orchard. The one behind us here is the property where we planted our first almond orchard. That was 57 years ago. And at the time, uh, you know, we irrigated with flood and we irrigated with flood for many years. Drip irrigation was not a part of the plan back then. There wasn't drip irrigation. We uh, put in our first drip orchard about 20 years ago. And when we, when we put uh, drip in initially, we were debating on whether or not to put it on the surface or to bury it. We weighed the pros and the cons, and we thought, well, let's just try it on an orchard and see what happens. So we did, we buried our first orchard, which is still in today, it's still in production. There's a, a very little maintenance. When you bury it, we buried approximately three to four inches. The benefits to us is the placement of water, the uniformity of the water throughout the field. It's also uh, the ability to put your micronutrients and your fertilizers in the water. You get it delivered very properly in the water stream. As the water goes down, it takes the nutrients with it. It's much better than what we used to do when we flooded. We just dribble fertilizer on top of the ground and flood it and let the water come over the top of it and, and run it down into the soil. Much better product having drip but we're very pleased with the Netafim products and uh, the longevity of the product. The drip hose is the same drip hose that we bought 20 years ago. We put it underground, it's been there ever since, and it's a great product, we love it. I call it our partnership with Netafim. They develop products for the growers here in the Central Valley in California. And they realize the, uh, the impact of almonds and they gear their products to that. And the uniformity of distribution is very key here. You, you're approaching 98% distribution factors here uh, as far as success when you have these double line drip systems and they've been measured at that too. Since the systems are designed particularly in 80 acre blocks, we have the ability to do somewhat of a variable rate irrigation or nutrition application. We can close off the lower end of one field and just apply it to the top, extra water, less water, more nitrogen, more potash, whatever you decide to do. Some sulfur applications, we can do that. We have that benefit. If you put dirty water in, in, in any product, it's going to plug up and decrease your efficiency and your trees will die. But the screen guard filtration systems seem to be really doing the work. We have the benefit with those systems that we can also sprinkle our row crops with that, our carrots and our potatoes with the same system.
with the Netafim dual system, we have found a 25% decrease in water usage and a 10 to 15% increase in production. Farmers are, to quote a buzzword, sustainable. Uh, we would not be here and could not continue to farm at the capacity we're doing without taking care of the environment. We're very careful about studying our, our soils, our water, what type of products we use on our property. The quality of everything we do has to be top notch. The farmers are the first naturalists. Our grandparents, we're on section 20 here in Arvin, California. Our grandparents bought on the, the opposite corner of this section, bought that from the Bank of Italy in 1929. Bank of Italy is now known as the Bank of America, right? So, but they've been farming on this ground for over 90 years. There's some form of sustainability going on by that family-run farm because we're still here and it's still very productive. Andy says we're the original environmentalists and I truly believe that too. We started a relationship with Netafim about 12 years ago on some, some other projects, some subsurface drip tape. As we got to know them and, and know the members of their team, um, we just we got to be real comfortable with the products that they had. We knew they were a reputable company. Their product support for for every product um, that they introduced us to was second to none. Well, I'm sorry to say, I've never had to call Netafim for any problems. We've never had any problems with any of the hose. There's been no defects, no emitters that came that, that didn't work in the field. Uh, it's just a great product. There's, there's no problems to talk about in any of our orchards. We've got about 800 acres of uh, almonds. They're all on drip. Uh, most of it's on Netafim, and uh, we just don't have any issues. You want to have a company that's, that's been in the business for a while that you know is going to be here for a while. I enjoy farming due to being in the outdoors. If you enjoy it, you'll stay with it. And it's not for someone who doesn't want to do it. I truly enjoy harvest because it's, it's the culmination of your previous nine months of work, and you get to see it all come to, to a fruition. Well, this is a, this is a way of life, is what we do.